Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn. Today we will learn the SQL keys. In this comprehensive tutorial, we will unravel the intricacies of essential concepts that are the backbone of relational databases. So that said, if these are the type of videos you'd like to watch, then hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified. So having said that, without any further delay, let's get started with our SQL keys. Starting with the primary key. So the primary key uniquely identifies each record in a table, ensuring data integrity and acting as a reference for relationships with other tables. For example, if you have a employee database, then each and every employee will be having their own employee ID. And that particular employee ID will act as a bridge between two or more tables when you're creating a join. So let's also take care of a few points to remember when it comes to primary keys. Primary key is how you designate a column as a primary key during a table creation. So whenever you create a primary or let's say you're creating a new table, then let's say you know which key has to be assigned as a primary key. In our case, if you're creating an employee data table, then you know that employee ID will be your primary key, but SQL will not know it. So to let the SQL know, you have to dedicate or you have to designate in terms of primary key, right? You have to specifically mention the primary key keyword in order to designate that particular column or that particular value as a primary key and only then the SQL will understand it. Next is enforcing uniqueness. Understand how a primary key prevents duplicate records, maintaining data accuracy. So primary key is the one key which ensures that the duplication is not done and every entry or every tuple is a unique entry. Next relationships. Explore how many primary keys establish relationships between tables for efficient data retrieval. Now let's consider the example. So here you can see the employee data table and the first one which is the highlighted column is the primary key which happens to be the employee ID. Now the second key which is foreign key. The definition for a foreign key. The foreign key establishes relationships between tables by linking a column in one table to the primary key in another maintaining referential integrity. Now a few points to remember. First one, creating foreign key relationships. Understand the syntax for defining foreign key constraints. Second one is cascade actions. Learn about on delete and on update actions to ensure consistency across linked tables. Third one, importance of foreign keys. Explore real world scenarios where foreign keys are crucial for a database integrity. Now what is a foreign key? So foreign key, let's say you want to uh, link two tables, right? When you link two tables based on a primary key and the dependent columns or the dependent values on the primary keys that you want to operate on are called as foreign keys. And remember the actions on delete and on update. So sometimes when you update something on a table, then that particular table will be only uh, actively having the updated values or deleted values will be removed from that table. But what if the table which is relied on the first table also needs to have that update, right? In such scenarios, th that action will not be happening. So unless you use the word cascade or the keyword cascade, cascade on delete, right? In that scenario, both the tables will be eliminated from the value which you want to delete from both the tables. So this is some importance. Now let's look at an example on foreign key. So in this particular example, the foreign keys are department IDs, which are related on the primary key, which is ID, right? So now let's move on to the next type of key in SQL, which happens to be unique key. The definition for the unique key. Unique keys ensure that the values in a column or a combination of columns are distinct across the table, preventing data duplication. You can also consider unique key as a primary key in few scenarios. Now let's take care of a few points to remember. Creating unique constraints, implement unique keys to maintain data integrity, use cases and understand scenarios where unique keys play a pivotal role in database design and lastly performance considerations. Explore the impactfulness of unique keys on query performance. Now, uh, remember I said you can also consider unique key as a primary key because let's say we consider the same example of employee database. Here we will be having multiple employees 
वन प्राइमरी की इज दी एम्प्लॉय आई डी एनी वेज बट वॉट एक्सेट्रा और वॉट एल्स इज यूनिक फॉर ईच एंड एवरी एम्प्लॉय देर ई मेल आई डी बट इट्स नॉट अ प्राइमरी की बट इट इज यूनिक राइट इट इज यूनिक एंड एवरी एम्प्लॉय विल हैव देयर यूनिक ई मेल आई डी नो बडी विल शेयर वन सिंगल ई मेल आई डी राइट इट इज यूनिक बट इट्स नॉट अ प्राइमरी की इट कैन ऑल्सो भी कंसिडर्ड एज अ प्राइमरी की बट इट इज नॉट अफिशियली कंसिडर्ड एज अ प्राइमरी की इन अ डेटा बेस यू कैनॉट डिक्लेयर टू प्राइमरी कीज यू विल बी हैविंग वन प्राइमरी की एंड यू कैन हैव मल्टीपल यूनिक कीज नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट टाइप व्हिच इज अबाउट कंपोजिट की डेफिनेशन कंपोजिट की इज फाउंड बाय कंबाइनिंग टू और मोर कॉलम्स टू यूनिकली आइडेंटिफाई रिकॉर्ड्स इन अ टेबल लेट्स से you have a table okay we will look into this in an example but before that let's look at the points to remember creating composite keys learn the syntax for defining composite keys next one is benefits explore the advantages of using composite keys in complex relationships third one is best practices understand when to use composite keys and potential pitfalls to avoid now the table now let's say we have a table of product and you have all the values but none of it them none of them are unique for example you have the transaction id and product id which were supposed to be unique right and customer id which was supposed to be unique but they are not unique one customer can have multiple products one customer can uh, order the same product multiple times right in such scenarios we don't have a unique key so to create one unique key we are trying to combine two or more columns in this particular instance we are combining transaction id and product id as one value which will become one composite key and which will become a unique value right that's what a composite key is now moving further we will discuss surrogate key now let's learn about the surrogate keys surrogate keys are system generated identifiers while natural keys are inherent attributes that serve as unique identifiers now let's look at some of the points to remember choosing between surrogate key and natural keys delve into the considerations for making informed decisions pros and cons weigh the advantages and disadvantages of each approach real world examples explore scenarios where one type of key may be more suitable than the other now let's learn the examples of surrogate keys so it's a little similar to the unique key so a surrogate key is identified as a unique identifier some sort of record or object in a table for example here we discussed about the email id right so this is a little unique to each and every employee and you can identify a certain record if you want to uh, identify let's say fifth record rithik you can access it through the surrogate key which is the email id of uh, rithik now with that let's move on to the next uh, important keys in our sql keys which happens to be the candidate key candidate keys are columns or a combination of columns that could potentially serve as the primary key now let's look at the points to remember identifying a candidate keys learn how to identify and evaluate potential candidate keys normalization understand the role of candidate keys in normalization process selecting the primary key discover the strategies for choosing the most suitable candidate key as a primary key now let's look at the example so here we have uh, the columns id name gender city email etc so a combination of keys can be considered as the candidate key so in this example both id and email can act as a candidate for the tables as they contain unique values and non null values now let's proceed further and discuss the last type of keys for the session which happens to be the super key a super key is a set of columns that uniquely identifies a record possibly including more columns than necessary to form a primary key now let's look at some of the points to remember understanding super keys explore how super keys encompass various key combinations database design implications learn how super keys influence the overall structure of a database optimizing super keys discover techniques for optimizing super keys for better performance now let's look at the example super key can contain multiple attributes that might not be able to identify tuples in a table independently for example the table has the following schema id name gender city email id and department id consider that the id attribute here corresponds to the employee id it is unique to every employee at the table in that case we can say that the id attribute can uniquely identify as tuples of this table so id is a super key of this particular table and with that we have come to an end of this session you have mastered the essential keys 
that are fundamental for building robust and efficient relation databases. And in case if you need any assistance regarding PPT and other resources used in the session, please do let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to help you as soon as possible. Until next time, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.